Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Well, something a little bit different today. Uh, I thought you might like to see, uh, this is a rainy day uh, project I had a couple of Sundays ago. Um, now, this is my little homemade solar scope. Now, <laughs> let's just uh, clear one thing up. Why am I calling it a solar scope? Um, now, don't let its appearance uh, misjudge you of how, what you think this thing's uh, coupled together with because it's all fake. Okay, yes, it is a telescope, it does work, um, and all that lot, but what I mean by fake, this is all cosmetic and it's absolutely unnecessary. The um, you know, the uh, dew shield and these straps, these straps are actually doing nothing. <laughs> they originally were to uh, hold this on, but um. I changed the design and I'll go into all that in, in later and uh, so I thought well I like the look of them so I left them on totally cosmetic they're doing absolutely nothing only go faster stripes <laughs> I mean uh, same with all this round here it's just all it's just all because I was bored and I just thought I can't leave it like that I've got to make it look uh, I mean I had no intentions to be honest of uh, putting it on YouTube but after I made it I thought oh, I like the looks of that and you never know some of you may find this interesting so um wh yeah why have I claiming it to claiming it to be a solar scope well optically there's nothing special about it it's in actual fact it's a uh, 50 millimeter 300 focal length refractor but what I'm going to use this for is for a method called solar projection now the solar projection method is just simply um sounds a little bit bizarre you know it's like um, pointing the um, your telescope at the sun I mean it, it's breaking all the rules but that's basically what you do you point your telescope directly at the sun with no filter nothing like that no it just just as it is and what happens is as the sunlight goes through the tube it gets magnified by the eyepiece and if you hold a uh, piece of paper up against uh, the eyepiece to a certain uh, uh, a distance away uh, the sun will project an image onto this white piece of paper um, now this is an ancient old technique of observing the sun and in my opinion it's the safest um, now you may be saying well why don't you just use you know a solar filter well I could do but then I wouldn't uh, I'd one of these to play around with and make you know what i mean um, another reason is and the main reason of all of why i call this as a solar telescope is it's all made of metal okay so every part of this apart from this uh, which is actually just cardboard that's all this is but it's never going to see any dew dew or any moisture because i'm only ever going to use this outside when it's nice and sunny um for instance if i excuse me a minute while i just right over i couldn't use something like this now something like this would be perfect for um, observing the sun and doing this solar projection method if it uh, was all made of metal and this is the main problem with modern telescopes today well when it comes to refractors anyway or small refractors everything even the IN stuff sometimes you know it is made of plastic and uh, not there's anything wrong with plastic I mean there's a lot of good things made of plastic but it melts <laughs> and that's uh, a big no-no when it comes to observing the sun or especially this method of solar projection because you've got to remember this is exactly the same as holding a magnifying glass up to to something and burning it with a with an ordinary magnifying glass or eyeglass whatever you want to call it so um every refractor has just got that same sort of lens and and it's just so happens that it's you know exactly the right focal length for it to uh, concentrate the sun and start burning things and it's usually this area around here that it'll catch and sometimes the inside of your um, focusing tube and even if the focusing tube itself isn't metal okay and this one isn't it's just chrome plated plastic that's all it is you can burn a big hole through that too um, another danger of course is your eyepieces um, you've got to make sure that all your eyepieces 
are completely made of steel. Um, so for instance, the, uh, have I got one handy around? I thought I had. Yeah. Um, such as these, which you're probably familiar with, the modified acromat as they call them. Uh, these are pr 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 provided with a lot of telescopes, especially Skywatcher telescopes. You couldn't use something like this because even though this is metal, uh, the actual barrel of the part, the, um, the housing inside is plastic. And if the sun starts moving around uh, and just catches the side, it's going to ruin your eyepiece as well. So it's really important that everything is steel. Um, so uh, going back on to why I've done this. Well, um, A, for observing the sun, which I've already said. And uh, B, because I had these optics kicking around. So what's actually in here? Um, well, if I can't spin it round, maybe you can see there. This is actually an old binocular objective that I've had in <laughs> one of my boxes of many lenses <laughs> that I've accumulated over the years. And I've always said I'm going to do something with that. And I was clearing some stuff out and I, I found it. I think it's just been overlooked. You know, I've had it in there years. And uh, luckily it had been in a bag so it wasn't scratched up and stuff. And I thought, right, say it, I'm, I'm going to make a little, little solar scope. And that's exactly what I've done. Now, even though it's come out of binoculars, um, you've got to remember in a pair of binoculars, uh, there is a lot of, there's usually a prism system. So this shortened down the actual focal um, length um, in actual fact. It, uh, it acts a bit like a cassegrain, if you like, or, a, or, a, or um, something like that, because it's, it's, it's zigzagging the light, so it doesn't look as long. Now, when you just take the objective lens out of a binocular, then obviously um, the focal length is going to completely change because there's no prisms in it. This is why it looks a lot longer. In actual fact, it's the objectives about there, but uh, and that's why uh, it'll be shorter now. Out of the binoculars, it'll be probably been about that. But that's probably if you're wondering, you know, um, why is it longer? Uh, and that's one of the reasons. Now, so that's the ob that's the uh, objective. We know what that's made of a binocular lens, which um, you know is really a refractor lens in a way. Um, it's not as perfect, it's not ideal, but it works and it does the job. The um, focusing. How do I focus this thing? Well, really, really easily. I'm only going to be using it for the sun, uh, so I've just simply. Just, I cut the tube, which we'll get to on in a minute. So there was enough play just by simply taking the uh, eyepiece in and out of the um, focusing tube, if you like. This is how I, I focus, exactly the same as an old style, um, you know, section. I can't think of the correct name. You know, segmented uh, the telescopic telescope. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> One of those. Uh, how they would uh, actually focus. So it's the, that's how we focus that. Um, again, this is um, what I'm using here is an old, um, it doesn't have to be old, but it uh, just is an old one I've had years, a six millimeter Plossel eyepiece. Now with this combination, it gives it um, a magnification of around about 50 times, which is plenty. Okay, it's plenty for, this, for the sun. Um, and this plossel is all steel. It's, it's steel throughout. This is steel, uh, all the housing steel. So ain't a problem. Um, now this part of the focuser, okay, how it comes down here. Now what that is, is I don't know if some of you have got um, a laser collimator uh, for a Newtonian reflecting telescope. Now they usually come with an adapter. Uh, and it's a two inch to inch and a quarter adapter. And that's what that is. Well, if you're a regular to my channel, you know I'm not a big fan of laser collimating anyway. Um, and this adapter just been again kicking around in a drawer. I think I've got a couple actually somewhere. Well, it's perfect. I mean, it's, it just <laughs> works perfect for to make some kind of focusing uh, mount at the bottom of this steel tube. Um, so, what is the main body made out of? Um, and some of you may recognize that shape. And if you do, that's because 
it's one of them. <laughs> uh, how do you pronounce this now? Fre Frebrez, Frebrez. Do you know what? This, this stuff is my Mandela effect. Do you remember that? This man that Mandela effect that we're going around where everybody were just, well, you know, saying things have changed, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's just misremembering. But this is my Mandela effect because this stuff, <laughs> I'm going off the subject terribly here, but this stuff in my world used to be called Frebrez. And I have asked so many people about this and they've gone, I'll say, you know that stuff that's, that's uh, fragrant and it sprays a really famous one? Oh, Febreze, yeah. And, you know, people, I mean, my girlfriend, she, she's gone mad. She says, no, that's never been for a breast. And uh, you look it up and it's, it's always been for a breast. Anyway, <laughs> that's totally off the track. That's, that's my Mandela effect. That's what this tube is. Now, I've just taken off this plastic thing. Um, I carefully cut through it I mean it's easily cut you can cut it with an axe or you can even cut it with a sharp knife really it's only thin aluminium uh, and I took this end off because I was just looking at it I thought that is a perfect shape for a telescope <laughs> so like half of it's done for you here with this little taper here on the neck so that's what that is the tube and of course I've just taken off the paint so that is my little solar scope. Now this thing works a tree. I mean, it, it really does. It, it, it's perfect. I was observing uh, some lovely activity on the sun that we had a couple of days ago, actually. Um, a, a, some really prominent uh, dark spots, uh, sunspots, if you like. Um, with this, uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's really easy to focus. I should put a little line on the... Uh, on the eyepiece here with Sharpie because I know it's round about there is perfect focus for it and like I say that's going to give me about uh, 50 times um, of course you can I can use this in the daytime if I want to as like a type of a spotting scope um, but I wouldn't be able to put any everything's going to be upside down obviously because that's how refractors work you know the image, the image gets flicked upside down um, but I wouldn't be able to put a uh, correctional prism on there or anything like that because of how I've uh, cut it to um, uh, for the focal length of the objective and how the focusing works. I just wouldn't have enough either in or out travel. I can't remember which one it is now. Uh, so, but I could still use it in the daytime. I mean, um, you can you use it, you know, for astronomy? Well, for the moon, yes. Uh, and that's about it really it's only 50 mil of aperture um, but under dark skies you know even 50 mil of aperture can give you some great results but ideally like I say I mean I don't know how good these this uh, um, objective is I don't know much about the binoculars it come out of so uh, but like I say for what I want it for it's absolutely perfect uh, for just <laughs> doing this solar projection method I've got to say it, it's my responsibility this is my channel please 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 be so careful when using any optics when the sun's around especially if you've got kids knocking around you know they've only got to say you know what you're doing and you're saying oh I'm looking at the sun with my telescope, you know, then turn your back, oh, I want to have a look at the sun. They've only got to go up to the eyepiece and that's it, okay? I mean, it's happened in the past, um, so please just be extra, extra careful. Uh, take no chances with your eyes, folks, please. For more on this method of solar projecting, I have done a video on it um, covering um, some, some techniques on how to use it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little look at my unmade solar scope. Maybe have a go yourself. Like I say, it's dead easy. It looks fancier than it actually is. It's so basic. Um, but anyways, yeah, it does the trick. It works. So uh, that's about it for another one, folks. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Um, maybe hit that like if you've liked the, what you've seen and, uh, and don't forget to subscribe because I do do regular uploads for the new astronomer and there's loads more to come on uh, different subjects, not just, you know, this is just something a little bit different. So in the meantime, folks, don't forget, be very, very careful if you're going to look at that sun and uh, just take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.